Hello and welcome to lesson two. We're going to continue from where we left off. If we scroll down, we're going to continue to use expressions to assign values. We're going to do maths and we're going to concatenate strings, but we're also going to take a closer look at different data types, right? data types and structures. We're not going to look at arrays and Boolean today, but we will look at strings and numeric data types. You'll notice I've still got my intro program here. This is saved in Replit. And no matter where you go, wherever you log into Replit, it'll be there. So I can create a new one. I'm just going to load this existing one. This is where we left off. We assigned a value to a variable, getting an input from the user. And this gets a string from the user. If I run it, it asks for my name. Mr. Computing, spelling doesn't matter. And then it concatenates that value to strings. Okay, we're concatenating strings. So this is a good point to talk about different data types. A string is a piece of text. This is text. This is text. Anything that's inside quotations is a string. So this is also a string. This variable stores a string. When you type something in on the keyboard, the input function accepts a string. So I accepted a string when I typed in compu Mr. Computing. But even if I type in numbers, right, this, this is a whole number. This is a big whole number. When I type that in, the computer thinks it's a string. Okay, let's take a look at different variables. So here you can see I've got a bunch of different variables, six different variables. One of them is called var1, we've got var2, and all the way to var6. This is a string. So var1 contains a string. Piece of text is string. Anything that's in quotations is a string. var2 contains a whole number. In programming, a whole number is known as an integer. Integer. The next one is a decimal number. var3 stores 3.1. In computing, this is known as a real number. Sometimes they're referred to as floats or floating point numbers because it has a decimal point. But the SQA refer to them as real numbers, no matter what the programming language that you're using refers to them as. This next one's interesting because it looks like it's a number, but remember what I said about strings? If it's in quotations, it's a string. So this is a string, but it looks like a whole number, an integer but it's a string. Likewise with this, it looks like a real number, but it's in quotations, it is a string. This one is an expression. This is six divided by two. So what does the variable store? It stores the result of this expression. So six divided by two is three, but if I were to print var six, what will it print? It prints 3.0. And that's because divisions always return a real number, a decimal number. So even if it's a whole number is the result, it will return it as, it will print it as a decimal number, a real. So why is it important that we know what type of data that we're using? Well, first of all, you can't do maths with text. Secondly, you cannot concatenate a number to a string. If you're working with data types, data types need to match. They need to be compatible. I'll show you a quick example. So here's a program. We've got a variable called var, and it stores a big integer, a big whole number. If I want to print the number is, and then join that number on the end, it will not work. Look what happens. Look at this. This is an error message in Python. It says trace back most recent call last. And then it tells us the file it happened in, the line it happened on. So the file main.py, the line, line three, and it tells you, it shows you the line and it tells you what the error is. It's a type error. Can only concatenate string, not int. So int means integer, whole number, which is what this is. And str means string, which is what this is. We cannot add a whole number to a string. So how do we fix that? Well, one option is that we could just make it a string and it'll work. But I think this is disgusting. What if we wanted to do maths with this? What if instead of that, we wanted to say uh, it's a, a mathematical equation. This won't work. And we want to get the, re the result of this. We can't just make that a string like that because then it'll just print the formula. Look at that. That's not what I wanted. So what we need to do is if we are storing a whole number like this is, this is going to be the number 248, the result of this calculation. If we want to concatenate that, we need to tell it to become a string. This is known as casting. Cast it as a string. So I'm going to make this var a string while it's being concatenated. So all I do is I type str open, open bracket and then at the end of the variable close bracket. 
What this does is it tells Python that this variable is being converted to a string before it's added to this string. So now this line of code is going to work. There we go, 248. See, my maths is pretty good. Likewise, if we're getting an input from the user, Python automatically treats it as a string, thinks it's text. But if we're asking for a number, for example, if we want to get two numbers, num1, enter a number, num2, enter another number, and then we want to create an answer, which is going to be num1 plus num2. If we want to display the answer is and then the answer, what's going to happen here? If I run this, and let's just add an easy one, 4 and 6. What's the answer? Well, you can see exactly what's happened. 4 plus 6 is not 46, it's 10. But what has happened? It's concatenated 4 and 6. 4, 6. The reason is num1 is a string, num2 is a string. We're not adding numbers, we are concatenating strings. So how do we fix this? Well, we could convert the numbers to integers right here. We could say int open bracket, close bracket, plus the integer version of num2. And then the answer will be a, an integer as well. So we need to tell this to be a string. We need to tell the answer to be a string in the output. So this will work. Enter a number, four, six. The answer is 10. Correct, but it might not be the best idea to take a string as an input and then cast it as an integer halfway through the program. If you're asking for numbers, it might be better to treat them as numbers from the get-go. So when you get an input, you can cast that input as an integer. And this is what I recommend. So this means that all the way through the program, num1 is an integer the whole way, num2 is an integer the whole way, answer is going to be an integer because it's the sum of two integers, and it's only when we're displaying the answer that we need to convert it to a string. So this is going to do the same thing, but this time it's going to be 3 plus 9. As we all know, the answer is 12. Now let's say we want to multiply. Let's multiply some numbers. We just use an asterisk. All right, let's see if this works. Easy one. Perfect. That works beautifully. What if we want to multiply decimal numbers? Let's try that. So I want to multiply 3.5. Oh, it didn't work. What's the error here? So it's in this file. It's on line one. Invalid literal for int. Int is a whole number, remember. We typed in a decimal number. We can't do that. So if we want to get a whole number, we use int, but if we want to get a decimal number, as I said earlier, they're called real numbers, but in Python, they call them floats, a float. Now, when it comes to exams, you want to use the word real, a real number, even though in the program, it's called a float. So we can do that. We just change it to a float. Now it will allow us to type in real numbers, 3.5, perfect, times 5.5, and the answer is 19.25. Beautiful. So today we've covered just one thing, data types. We've looked at strings, we've looked at integers, and we've looked at real numbers, also known as floats. It's crucial that you know the data type you're working with, that you're aware of what data type you're working with, and that you know which data types are compatible. You can multiply and add floats and integers because they are number data types. If I run this, even if I type in a whole number to a float, it accepts it. And this will work. But when we use a float, a real number, the result is a real number as well. But they are compatible. Numbers and strings, however, aren't compatible. If I run this and I do the same thing again, it doesn't work because the answer is a real number, a float, but we cannot concatenate a float to a string. So we need to tell it to be a string. Then it will concatenate. Beautiful. So that was lesson two. This knowledge is going to be used all throughout the rest of the course. You're going to have to constantly be aware of what you're asking the user to input, whether it's a float, an int, or a string. And you're going to have to be aware that you cannot concatenate numbers to text. You have to convert it to a string. 
The more you practice, the better you'll get. It will become second nature by the end of it. Hope you've enjoyed this. Give it a practice on your own. Try and make your own programs. Try making a little calculator. Have a mess about, see what you can do.